Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this series we're going to make Snake in Unity. In this video we're going to set up our scene to be able to start making our game. Let's begin. Alright, so the goal in this series is to make Snake in Unity. It's a very simple game which makes it perfect for beginners to learn. So here is the Unity main window, we're going to create a new project, name it Snake, and we're going to use the 2D template. Alright, so let's hit create project. All right, so here's our completely empty scene. Now, the first thing we're going to do is give our scene a more appropriate name than sample scene. So let's rename this to game scene. This will be the main scene where our game is. We will later have a different scene for the main menu and anything else we need. So let's set up our main camera. Since we selected 2D, our camera is already in orthographic mode, which is what we need in order to display in 2D. Here we can see the orthographic size of our camera. This size represents the amount of units displayed vertically. So in this case, this is half of our vertical size. So with a size of 5, we are currently seeing from minus 5 to plus 5. So in order to get a total vertical space of 100 units, let's set our size to 50. So just like that, you can see that our camera is displaying from minus 50 all the way up here to plus 50. Okay, that's our camera setup. Now let's create a game handler, which will be our main starting object. So we create a new empty game object, name this the game handler, and let's locate it on 00. zero. Now this will be our main container for all of our preset scene objects. The better you keep your objects organized, the easier it is to find what you're looking for. So in here, I'm going to drag the camera inside the game handler. Now let's make a game handler script, which will be the entry point for most of our game. So before we do that, let's create a new folder, and we're going to name this scripts. Make a new C sharp script, and this will be our game handle. Okay, here is our script, and now let's just add a debug.log on our start. Debug.log, and say game handler.start. So back in here, let's drag the script onto our game handler game object and run the code. And yep, there it is, game handler.start on the console. So everything is looking good, we have our entry point correctly working. So now let's set up a background object. So first, let's create another folder. This will be for our textures. All right, so I've copied some textures in here. I have the snake and food textures. And then I also have a simple white pixel texture. This is very helpful when we want to display a colored rectangle on a sprite render. As you can see, it is literally just a one by one white pixel. So let's begin by setting up the import options for this texture, which for our white pixel, we want the pixels per unit to match one. So whenever we apply this texture, it will occupy one unit. Now for our other textures, what you set in here will depend on the size of the texture that you have drawn. In this case, I want it to occupy a bit more than one unit, so let's put at about 180. When we finally use this texture, we will modify this to make sure everything works correctly. So our game will be grid-based, and the grid will have a size of one. So that's why we are setting up our textures to occupy roughly one unit. Okay, so let's draw something in our scene, create an empty game object, this will be the background. Let's add the sprite render component. And again, with just the sprite render, you can see that nothing is visible. So that's why we drag our helpful white pixel. And just like that, we have a white pixel occupying one by one. Let's make it in gray to be a bit different from the background and stretch it to 50-50, which will be the total size of our map. Again, our game will be grid based, so down here we want to be grid position 0, 0 and over here 25, 25. So let's shift our background to 25, 25, 0. And just like that, our camera is there on 0, 0 and the background works like that. Okay. Now let's make a new game object. This will be our snake, and we're going to add again the sprite render component and drag the snake head. If we zoom in, we can see one unit in our grid, and as you can see, the texture size is pretty much correct. It is supposed to occupy just about the correct size of the grid. So this is our snake with its texture. Okay, now let's set up some basic sorting layers. So you can simply click in here and add a new sorting layer. Let's make a background layer. So the background layer renders before the default. So the default is on top of the background, and then we have a new layer, and this will be the over just in case we need it later. So down here, our snake will be on the default sorting layer, and our background will be on the background sorting layer. Okay, so this is our basic setup. We have our camera correctly set up, we have a background just to show the play area, and we have our snake object. 
Now, in order to help us develop our game faster, we're going to use some very helpful classes from the CodeMonkey utilities. This is just an optional step, you don't absolutely need to have them, but it will help us in iterating and debugging our game. You can go to the website, unitycodemonkey.com, to download the utilities for free, and then you get a Unity package file. When you open the Unity package file, you'll see this window. These utilities contain a lot of classes and functions that will be immensely helpful while developing the game. So in here, we simply select everything and import. And there it is, you can see now we have a CodeMonkey folder on our script that contains everything. And as you can see, this contains all of the source files, so feel free to go through all of these to see how everything works. Now to make sure everything is set up correctly, let's go into the game handler. We want to spawn some pop-ups. So let's go all the way up here and write using CodeMonkey and using CodeMonkey.utils. This is how we use the CodeMonkey namespace. And now in here, let's create a function periodic, which triggers an action every certain amount of time. So we will execute this action. And inside, let's do a text pop-up. And we're going to execute this action on every 0.3 seconds. So this might seem confusing, but it's extremely simple. In here, we are simply going to trigger this action every 300 milliseconds. And inside this action, we are simply going to do a text pop-up on the mouse position saying a text and a number. This is just so we can verify that everything has been correctly installed. So let's test. And yep, there it is. As you can see, we are getting our pop-ups, which means the utilities are correctly working. This will be very useful as we go along. But again, as I said, this is only optional. You don't absolutely need to have this, but it will be very helpful. So we have our complete setup almost done. Let's add one more very useful thing. We're going to create a class that we can use to easily reference assets from code. That way we keep all our references in just one class and everywhere else in our code we just access it. So let's create a new c -sharp script and we're going to call this the game assets. Okay, so in here we will have various fields for all the asset references that we need. So for example, we add a field for a sprite for the snake head sprite. So back into the editor in here, let's create a new game object. This will be the game assets and we drag our script onto it. So as you can see, we have a public field for our snake head sprite. So let's drag that onto there. And now here in our code, in order to access this from another class, let's add a static instance. Now in here, normally the correct name is exactly like this. We name it instance. However, in this case, and in this case alone, we're going to make it just I in order to make our code easier to write. Again, as I said, in any other case, you should give a proper name to your instance variable. This is a very unique exception, just so that elsewhere we can simply do sprite. If you make a static instance outside of this, you should give it a proper variable name. Okay, so we have a static variable for our instance. Now we need to make a private void awake, and inside our awake, we set the instance to this. So just like that, we can access all of these public fields through a static reference. For testing, let's go into the game handler. And here we'll create a new game object. We add a sprite render component. And then we can set the sprite to be grabbed from the game assets class dot instance. And then we grab our snakehead sprite. So just like that, you can see how we can have an asset reference through our code. So now if we run our game, Yep, there you go, we have a new game object and it is correctly using the snake head sprite. Now we need just one last thing, which is we need to make sure that the game assets are awake runs before anyone else tries to access one of these fields. So we can simply go into edit, project settings, then the script execution order, and in here we drag the game assets script and we put it to run before the default time. This will make sure that the game assets, that script, the awake runs before any other script run the game again, and as you see, everything works perfectly fine. So there you have it. We now have everything set up to begin creating our game. We set up the main camera and a main game object that will be the entry point for the game. We also imported the CodeMonkey utilities, which will be extremely useful for helping us make our game faster. And we also made the game assets class, which will also be very useful for grabbing asset references from code. In the next video, we're going to start building our game by creating our snake and moving it around the map. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.